All right, so today we're gonna to talk about the different types of carburetors. There's three main distinctions, updraft, downdraft, and natural draft carburetors. This is all how the air gets into the engine, where it flows. Does it flow up, does it flow down, or does it flow naturally, which is just horizontally? So this is an old Briggs & Stratton lawnmower, and this is a downdraft carburetor. This right here is the air filter. The carburetor's in here, and the engine's in there. So I've got this one pulled apart. The air filter would be up here, the engine would be over here. So the air has to go through the air filter, down, and then into the engine. So this is a downdraft carburetor. Newer Briggs & Stratton engines, um, usually the ones that have the paper filters on there. We were talking about air filters the other day. This is an oil wetted filter. Briggs & Stratton's with a paper filter or a natural draft carburetor. It just flows right through the paper, across, right through the carburetor, and into the engine. Since it just flows horizontally, that's a natural draft carburetor. Updraft carburetors are usually on things like snowblowers. Snowblowers don't have air filters, so if we design the carburetor to take the air from the bottom instead of from the top, any large particles like dirt or rocks will not go into the carburetor just due to their weight. So we don't have to rely on the filter to make sure it's kept clean. So there's updraft carburetors, downdraft carburetors, and natural draft carburetors. All right, another distinction between carburetors is a float type carb and then also a diaphragm type carb. So a float type carb, I unfortunately don't have any demonstration pieces to show you. So I'm gonna make sure that there's something up on the screen right now. With a gravity-fed fuel system, where the fuel in the tank is above the carburetor, right? we don't want all of that gas to just rush into the engine right away. Then your engine would be flooded, and a flooded engine just means there's too much gasoline in there and it's not going to run. So we have to create a valve system that stops all of the gas from coming in and only allows a certain amount. And this works very similarly to your toilet. The back of the toilet, there's the tank. In that tank, there is a float. And this float is the same principles that work inside of a carburetor. Um, there's a certain amount of fuel in there, just enough fuel to go into the engine. When that fuel is sent into the engine, then the float goes down, the valve opens, and more gasoline pours in. As that gasoline pours in, it puts the, the float back up and closes the valve. So that's a float type carburetor. A diaphragm type carburetor, you're not really going to see any in four stroke engines. They're very rare in four strokes. Uh, we have one, I believe, in the shop, maybe two. Where you will see diaphragm type carburetors is on two stroke motors. So this is an old two-stroke chainsaw, um, that's a diaphragm type carburetor. I can't tear it apart so let me explain what's in there and put up some visuals again. Inside of that carburetor there is a little piece of paper with a spring in there and that spring, due to pressure differences again, act as a pump. As it moves it pumps gasoline through the carburetor to be used and dispersed into the engine. The reason why you put diaphragm type carburetors on two strokes is because two strokes can be operated in any orientation. You can't run a four stroke upside down, you can run a two stroke engine upside down. Since you might have a two stroke upside down, you don't want a float type carburetor because then the float is just working on gravity. There's no uh, gasoline to make it float anymore. So the entire thing would be messed up. So we need a different type of carburetor. That's why you're gonna see a diaphragm type carburetor on a two stroke engine like a chainsaw or a string trimmer or anything like that, a heads trimmer as well. Plenty of different places. But you're not gonna see a float type carburetor on a two stroke and you're not gonna see a diaphragm type carburetor on a four stroke. The last thing that we're gonna talk about today in the carburetor are the choke and the throttle. The throttle limits and dictates the amount of air fuel mixture that gets into the engine. This means that if it's wide open throttle, 
all of the air fuel mixture gets into the engine, creates a bigger explosion, faster revving engine. If we have the accelerator just idling, or we have it down on half throttle, then less of that air fuel mixture gets into the combustion chamber, and thus less explosion, slower revving engine. The other part is the choke. Now this one, very applicable to us. We run on air, please use air too. If someone were to choke you out, you're not going to get as much air, right? So we use the choke to limit the amount of air getting into the carburetor to make the engine do different things for us. We use the choke when we start the engine because we don't need as much to get off the bat. We don't want to flood the engine right, right away. Um, and we also could use it to stop the engine. It's not the best way to stop the engine, but if someone chokes you for long enough, you're going to sleep. Same thing with this. If we choke out an engine while it's running, it will stop. So this is an old chainsaw. This is, this is older than every single one of you in my class right now. Uh, it's, it still runs great. So I'm able to bring you up to it and show you a little bit of closer view of the choke and the throttle. All right, so let's start with the choke because it's right here. This little flap is the choke. It's about the size, eh, a little bit bigger than a penny for this carburetor. But you see how it fits right into that diameter circle. This is where the air flows through. When I'm starting the engine, I don't want a ton of air going in, so I set it on full choke. There is a little hole down here. A little half crescent shape, you see that shadow right there. That's so when I'm starting, a little bit of air goes in. I need air to start the engine, but I don't need as much as when it's operating normally. So, when it's operating, I can knock it up to no choke, and then I'm good to go. On the other side of the carburetor, there's the same shape in the same sort of orientation, and that's the throttle. The only difference is that the throttle has a couple of holes drilled in it, so it can get the air fuel mixture when it's idling. If I operate the trigger, the throttle down here, you'll notice that this is moving. And unlike the choke, which just has some rigid settings, just on or off, maybe I could hold it in half choke, but it's on or off, the throttle has a lot more variability in there. So again, the choke. Just like if someone were choking you, if we choke out the engine, there's no air getting in. Without the choke in, all the air you want. The throttle controls the air fuel mixture that actually gets into the combustion chamber. So that's the difference between the choke and the throttle.